My earliest memory of the Aston Martin, or any Aston Martin for that matter, very easy to recall. I was 10 years old in 1965. My mother took me to a drive-in movie theater to see Goldfinger in the summer of 1965. That international mystery man of intrigue, man of power, elegance, deadly capability, matched perfectly with the car, blew my mind, and has turned me into an Aston freak, an Anglophile, and a Bond fan ever since. The name is Mike Ashley from Yorkshire in England, and the man that uh, had the luck of being selected to drive this car for the promotion of Goldfinger and Aston Martin. I was the only salesman in the company at the time, really, so it was a natural to pass me on for this world tour. The impact on the company was outstanding. I understand they were besieged with uh, four or five hundred calls a day for a, half a year. The name of the car became absolutely phenomenally like a Hoover or, you know, it's an Aston Martin. It was an extraordinary thing for the company. I was chosen, as they said, I thought, because I was single, but in truth my managing director did tell me that he thought I had the personality, charisma and the ability to do the job. Driving the most famous car in the world was a huge responsibility. It was a huge joy to be sitting on a highway through Germany and, wow, I'm in this car. I mean, it's an incredible thing. We first flew it to Los Angeles, then we were in New York, and then from there we were driving through Europe, uh, Belgium, Germany, uh, with Gert Froby, on through Switzerland, Italy, and then to France, the premier down the Champs-Élysées. We were in South Africa. It was, it was amazing where we went. Being back in the car is an extraordinary retrospect of an amazing history that I was given. Well, they made, after all, Less than a thousand of them, they were built by hand. Very high performance bespoke automobile. So then you get to the James Bond car, which was bespoke in a whole different way. Loaded with the most high tech for its time, gadgets, deadly, lethal, and incredibly appealing. The car did everything that a 10 year old boy or perhaps a 55 year old man might like their car to do. After all this time, we've been promoting this car. We've flown it to New York. It's been to Hong Kong, it's been to London, it's been all over the world. It's really my favorite. I feel like I know it so well. I'll almost be sad when it goes. We've looked after it, we've pampered it for the last six months. I mean, the appeal of a classic car, first and foremost, starts with its beauty. The Aston Martin started the DB456 series, of which the Bond car is in the center of as a DB5, actually started with this car in front of me, which is a DB4. It's an Italian design coach built by a company called Touring of Milan, actually built in England after the first prototypes under license by Aston Martin themselves. But it's truly an intercontinental design with British mechanicals and Italian style. Taste of the James Bond lifestyle does come with the territory of being around this superb car. Uh, just the name Aston Martin, the quality, you follow in with a great taste for Tattinger, for instance, and uh, Piaget watches and beautiful girls. It all follows from just the pure, inherent lifestyle in and around the car. It's rather wonderful, actually. To me, the most charming aspect of the James Bond car is that it's absolutely original and unrestored. I hope the car is used and driven as well as exhibited to the public. The cardinal rule in my own garage is that everything has to be usable and fun to drive. The people who restore cars to perfection, we call them trailer queens. They're hermetically sealed. They're, it's almost sacrilege to drive them on the roads. I say to those people, what's the purpose? It's like not making love to your girlfriend, so she's that much more desirable for the next guy. Vintage cars as investments are becoming more and more popular. You take any five-year period, the average value of that car has gone up. And what people really like is that it's a non-taxable asset on the profit. It's called a wasting asset, so therefore there's no tax that you pay when you come to sell your car and you've made a big profit on it. With the unreliability of a lot of the traditional financial instruments, it's nice to have a bit of rolling art that you can drive to the pub, which you cannot do with a painting.
the record-breaking moment was at Maranello uh, last year when we sold the Ferrari, the 250 Testarossa, when we sold that at auction for over $12 million. And that was a real defining moment. I mean, that's world record. That's not going to be beaten for a while, I think. This is a farewell to the car, indeed. However, the next owner is another saga, and who knows what that might lead to. I am hoping it is a man that doesn't put it in a cellar or put it in a museum, but rather enjoys the life I led with it down to the local pub, over to the casino, and uses it to bring in some of the finest young ladies in the world. That is what this life is about. The most famous car in the world, ladies and gentlemen, and we are so honored. I don't know if you guys got goosebumps, but I certainly did. We've been waiting for this moment all night. The Aston Martin DB5, the Bond car as it's known, and if I could just take a moment to uh, introduce Jerry Lee, who's been the owner and the uh, caretaker of this car for so many years, who's kept it so well, untouched, as it comes to us today. I think that if one person deserves a round of applause here tonight, it's certainly Mr. Jerry Lee. Thank you very much. Please stand up. He's the man that bought it from Aston Martin all those years ago. 2.6 million pounds I have now. That's 2.6 million pounds. For the very first time, ladies and gentlemen, the Bond car is selling tonight at 2.6 million pounds. The room is in your hands. I hand it to you. Sir, and anyone else that would like to join in, we are selling the world's most famous car. Are we all done? All finished? In that case, I'm selling the car. Sold! Congratulations. 2.6 million pounds for the most famous car in the world. When I was a lot younger and I'd seen the movie and I, this was my favorite movies and I just loved watching all the gadgets in the movie and the history of it, at the time it was so modern and the technology was so great and it's a great car. I have a little museum with 25 cars in it and this will be one of the 25. I'll probably see myself having it for a long time. Usually when I buy a car I just keep it for forever. I'll probably never use the gadgets. <laughs> I'm not sure they work that good, it's you know, the cars. You know, close to 50 years old, so a lot of 50 year old stuff doesn't work that well. Hey, you really never own a car, you just keep it till somebody else gets it. We all die sometimes, so <laughs> it gets passed on. But I will keep it in the present condition. Uh, it would be wrong to restore the car. I'll probably drive it uh, some and we'll probably just put it out on tour and let people use it and put it on display, share it with the world.